Welcome people to the World Wide Web and it's another Saturday so it's review day so what do I have for you today? Um, fortunately managed to skip out to the cinema last night and see Ant-Man and Wasp Quantanium, Quantanium however you pronounce it. So um, but before I get into it obviously I'll keep spoilers to it as usual but yeah let's um, let's get going with this video. So a little bit of background, obviously you, you do have to watch, I would say Ant-Man 1 and 2 specifically to, to understand what's going on and to get a little bit more premise of, of stuff. I mean, the trailer does kind of give it away, but if you've not seen any, any of the other films then it may be a little bit confusing. I have quite liked 1 and 2, so um, tried no bias to be there, but obviously we did have uh, did have fairly high hopes for it. I watched the trailer, and the trailer was did set me off a, on a little bit different tone, I think, to the previous two films. Um, yeah, and obviously we shall see how that goes. So obviously, for anybody who hasn't seen any of these trailers, uh, basically it is that um, Cassie, so Scott um, Paul Rudd's character, his daughter has been experimenting with um, mapping out the quantum realm. And because she's been sending the signal down there, an incident happens and the whole family gets stuck in the quantum zone. And then you basically learn kind of what happened between the first movie and the second movie-ish because of the, um, because Jennifer Lilly, Lilly's character, um, Wasp, um, her mum obviously disappeared in the first film and then obviously they found her at the end of the second film. And you kind of get a bit of a backstory to it, or you see parts of it. You do get a little, uh, quite a big chunk, I'd say probably like 10 15 minutes of learning what she was doing. Personally, I would have liked a bit more side of that. Um, the film is two hours and five minutes, four minutes in total, with the end credit scenes. There are two credit scenes. Um, the first one comes just after the main credits that actually relates to the movies and the movies going forward. The second one relates to TV. And I, I will keep it there. Um, so you don't necessarily have to stay into the end credits. It's not major unless you specifically are, are watching the, the Disney Channel uh, Marvel TV series. But yeah. <clears throat> so that's the premise of the thing. Uh, the premise of the film. That obviously, you know, they get stuck in the quantum zone. You meet all these new characters and stats. Um, and then obviously there's a story and you meet... Jonathan Mayer's character Kang, which I'm sure is no secret now. We know he's going to be the big bad. He will be the big bad in uh, the next Avengers film, I think 2015. Um, or 16, or, or whatever it is, whatever Avengers 4 or 5 um, is King, Kang's dynasty, I think it is. Um, obviously, we've already seen John Mayer's in Loki season 1. He appeared at the end of it, and this is a. Oh, we get to see an altern another alternate. Um, I think that's what they call them from Loki. So yeah, um, so I'll give it a rating overall and then um, and give a little bit of details and then we'll go spoilers. So uh, honestly, I gave this 6.5 out, um, out of 10. Um, it was a good film. It kind of kept um, some of the same um, ideas and premises that the original film did. Um, but it was missing, it changed the dynamic very much. The first two, um, you know, Ant-Man and Ant-Man of Wasp, it's always been him and his gang, and this is a more family oriented film that you have to, you know, and it works quite well, meeting the new characters. I actually really, really enjoyed the Quantum Realm, and, and to be honest, that is probably why it's not rated as more. I, I would have preferred them to stick another 30 minutes, another 40 minutes onto this, and us to actually learn more about the Quantum Realm, to build more up on this film. But yeah, it, it, I mean, it is a good film if you like the trailer, you know, and you are a Marvel fan, and I'd definitely go see it, it's definitely worth a watch. Right, let's, I'll put the spoiler up here, this is, okay, so anything now I'm going to ruin a lot of stuff, so apologies, um, but here we go. Um, so yeah, as I said, really liked this film, really wanted um, more time in the quantum zone, and that's, I, I feel, as I say, and changing the dynamic. So obviously... His gang, um, so Scott's gang, his crime gang, so uh, Lewis and the other two guys, those characters are not in this film. It, I, I, I missed him, I would have liked Lewis. I think there was times to put him in there, but Peyton Reed, who's the director, has said that obviously because it was gone from 
the, the human realm to the quantum realm and the family. Um, there wasn't really space for him. And I get that. I understand that. But I still think you could fit him there. There were cameos from a lot of things. Randall Park, he had a very small cameo. And I really wish we would have had a bit more um, of time with him. His the kind of... I did quite like it. It took a little while for it to sink in. And I think the overall kind of Scott daydreaming at the beginning. And then kind of, you know, he's walking down the street. He's going, this is what my life's happened, blah, 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 blah. And he has the kind of same at the end. I kind of feel this is maybe a foreshadowing of bigger events to come. So, obviously, a few new actors uh, or actress, obviously, with um, Cassie. Um, Scott's daughter is now played by a third actress, so we've had a new actress for every incarnation film. I did write her name down, so let's. Um, Newton, Kathy Ka Newton. Um, so, she, obviously, if you do or don't know if you read the comics and stuff, obviously, she is stature. Um, kind of a, a, an apprentice giant man, so to speak. She's one of the young Avengers, that's how she started off. And I feel very much um, this is where they will go. I think Kang's Dynasty will have the, the main adult heroes um, passing the torches to a younger generation and that's how the next, five, whatever that will be, phase six or seven or whatever, we will have the young Avengers and that's where they will go forward with a new generation and stuff. Um, Obviously, we've met every single main Young Avenger, except for Hulkling, but I assume in Secret Wars they will pop him in there somewhere. But by the by, we're getting a bit off. Obviously, so, obviously, so yeah, so they, obviously this accident happens to get sucked into the quantum realm. They meet a few people. They meet Veb, who is uh, voiced by David. I, that, he played Polka Dot Man. He was one of um, Lewis's gang in the first two. The one who's Baba Yaga. Um, he was quite good. His his character Veb is quite funny, um, and they they do keep a lot of the comedy elements there, and I did really like that. That, that I think that is in keeping with Batman. He's a little bit of a comic. He's not really a serious um, superhero, and that was the only thing that kind of that that side of it. Um, so obviously, um, when they go to the quantum realm, they realise that Kang had been there. He was um, he was exiled. Or, or what or this by a group of people we don't know who they are until the very end um angeline uh, lily's character her mum michelle pfeiffer she was there she helped him rebuild it until as she's rebuilding it she actually got like a he's kind of a telepath when she rebuilds his machine because it's uh done by telepathy she gets a glimpse of what he's been through and realizes that he's not a nice person and basically sabotages his engine that she helped fix um, obviously she ran away um, and then obviously got rescued by Hank Pym and in that time basically Kang is a dictator he's ruled over um, and then obviously when they come back into it she realises that Kang's there and doesn't realise how bad he is she, wa she was fighting him for the best part of 30 years while she was there but it's got a far lot worse. I mean, they bring a new character's new world, the buildings come alive, which I thought was quite cool as well. Um, and it all builds up to kind of stopping this Kang. Um, and I did like that. I say the only thing, like Jonathan Mayers, I do like him. I know he's going to be in Creed and stuff, and he was in the Loki series. His It threw me throughout the whole of this, of his depiction of this version of Kang. He seemed to be quite um, not as menacing as I know him from the comics and not as menacing as we all assumed like Thanos was. Like Thanos, we saw him at the first Avengers film. He was sitting on his chair. He smirked. Then all we got is his minions, you know, and his minions were quite strong. You know, when they all attacked um, and everything, and you saw how big the Avengers had to fight in the first film. You're thinking, oh my God, if this is the guy who's running them, he's going to be absolutely horrendous, which we saw in um, Info, in Infinity War, um, and obviously you saw how bad he was that he took on all the Avengers to steal. Jonathan Mayer's character didn't quite live up to what I thought it was gonna be. Now, I'm not saying he's a bad actor, and I'm not saying it wasn't bad acting, it just, it not necessarily split personalities, but he very much he has his motive, and because it is Ant-Man, who I don't class as maybe as, as an, a serious Avenger, because I'll say you know, they had the comedy role, which works for him, it was very much like 
yeah, he can take on that man, and that man does give him a beating at some time. It's like, well, hang on, if that man can beat him, then a whole team of Avengers will actually wipe the floor with him. So that's where I was feeling. So <clears throat> mostly up to the film, obviously they fight Kang, they defeat Kang as you would expect, um, and basically um, he gets sucked into his machine, which they assume he possibly dies, and then they go back to reality. And this is where then Scott's walking down the street, kind of mirroring what he was in the very beginning of the film, and then. And this is where I think the good fit, this is all the setup. This film is a perfect setup, and as I said earlier, foreshadowing. But Scott's like, hang on, did we get rid of Kang? You know, who were these people that were after him? Hang on, maybe he's the good guy, he was trying to save it. And that I liked, and this is why I think maybe his character isn't as deadly as you see. I mean, Kang, you don't, you see the foreshadow, or you see the past when Michelle Pfeiffer interacts with his ship of what he's done. Now, after that point, he throws a few people around and manhandles Modok, which obviously is the guy from the first Ant-Man film who was the B kind of guy. I can't remember the character's um, name and stuff. And he becomes Modok, and that was yeah, he had kind of a little redemption arc. And if it, and unfortunately that had been ruined because I know they had mentioned that he was going to be in this film as this character. So to be honest, they should have kept that quiet in my eyes. Um, but but yeah, so obviously Kang. He's not always as menacing as he seems, and I think maybe he, when he's trying to get out, even though he says he would destroy loads of the universe, he promises that he would kind of keep the universe, so the 616, I think that's, yeah, 616 is a comic universe, I'm not quite sure which one's the Marvel universe, but he would keep that one, he would return uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's character to her daughter, and he will kind of make sure that's safe. He kind of implies that, he doesn't say he would destroy, he, he just says he would destroy other universes, so I'm taking that on, that's what he means. Um, so because he that I you know it kind of and I think when you realise that near the end of the film that that's maybe why I I weren't quite gelling with his character. Um, obviously, then the first behind the scene credits, obviously because that man ends very happy. And I as I say, I don't know where they're necessarily going with that man and the wasp. And because they're almost stuck in the quantum realm, I thought that would have been a good idea to kind of blend spur stature on because they get kind of stuck. In the quantum realm and then they get out really easy and there was i was like okay is this because of the time of the film and you cut it down and you had to cut you know didn't build us up the same way with michelle Pfeiffer doesn't talk about her character what went on until she goes into the quantum realm further in the film and i would have liked a lot more her to build up have like another 20 minutes at the beginning of the film and have certain scenes where because she does get asked by ever by a daughter like how what was in the quantum realm and I'd like her to like daydream or just to remember stuff like that or have flashes to kind of build up how evil this Kang person is. Um, but yeah, anyway, at the end of the film they have a, a kind of celebrated birthday for Cassie because he missed some, it's not her birthday, and then the credits roll. Then when it rolls you see a different version of Kang or several of them all talking and basically they go to this arena, they've assembled what looks like thousands of Kangs. I assume potentially this is where they are going and this is why they are kind of, Kang is not as ultimately powerful as Thanos, but it's just there is thousands of this one character, but different variations. And this is um, basically, that's what we expected. Whether they're going to keep throwing the odd character in the Marvel films, which I think might get a bit, you know, it m might do people's nothing if you just constantly, okay, here's this one version of Kang. Here's another version of Kang. It, you know, every series, every film, we get in one little bit of him. There's a cameo somewhere or stuff like that. I feel like that could be annoying. I feel that take what they did with Thanos preview that he's going to be. They saw this auditorium, you know, this weird glad um, coliseum. That's it of these Kangs, and then basically have it at like Kang's dynasty is literally they are unleashed. It is absolutely you know the films like Jonathan Myers character here, there, and everywhere fighting all the different Avengers in all different formats. I think would be brilliant. And the fact we because you don't show them as much, you don't really know what to expect. You can only see like this one version, and maybe this one version, and maybe the next Ant Man film will bring that character back, realizing that actually they made a mistake. Who knows. But yeah, as I say, I, there are bits I haven't missed out, and I'm sure there's you know characters and stuff. Um, but yeah, as, as I said overall, I really liked it. Um, to be honest, this is the best 
trilogy so far of consistency. He's very consistent in his films. This one I know has been ranked a little bit lower than the other two, and I think because of the dynamic changes, it's not him and his friends. But yeah, I'd definitely rate it. Um, this has been Cypher Sigma. Um, this has been my review of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantanium. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next one.